Ornatrix Maya is not only for creating fur and hair, it can also be used to create feathers and vegetation like trees and shrubs. The difference for creating these types of structures is the ability to grow hairs on top of other hairs or to create branches on top of stems and to be able to potentially propagate this effect multiple times so that we can have branches that have other branches and maybe leaves on top of them. To enable this type of effect we have a special operator called Propagator inside Ornatrix and we will learn about it in this quick tutorial. I'll just add my fur ball and scale down the length of the strands and I'll also decrease the number of hairs so we can see what we're doing a bit better just because we have fewer strands. Turn off the grid and maybe make the strands a little bit thinner. So at this point this is a pretty typical setup and now I will go and add the propagator node operator on top of my hairs. When I do that you can see right away that the hairs that I had before are now growing more hairs on top of them. Let's go through some of the parameters here and learn what they do. The first one is the length parameter and you can adjust the length of the propagated hairs fairly easy by just changing this one parameter. You can also change the randomness of the length so some strands can be longer while others can be shorter. Let me just change the randomness to zero and additionally you can see that there is a length ramp which you can adjust and all of these ramps are tapered towards the root and we can change that so for example if I adjust this you can see that the hairs are no longer becoming short towards the root and if we just make this even, they will be even throughout the whole strand. So once I adjust the length to be a little bit shorter, I can go to the top of this operator and look at some of the generation methods. At first we have the random method which will place the roots on top of these hairs in a random order, but we can also have the uniform method which will place them at equal distances from each other. In addition we have a vertex method which will just create new strands on every vertex of the initial strand. So this means if I had fewer points on my hair from guides node, we can have have fewer hairs on top of our propagator node. For the remainder of this tutorial let's just keep it at random to make it a little bit more interesting. The next parameter is count and this controls how many new hairs are generated on top of our strands. The smaller value I have here the fewer strands will be generated on top of my hairs. And then we have the vertices per root count and this just specifies the number of points on each of the newly generated strands that we will have. The low range and high range parameters allow me to specify where the new strands will start to be planted in terms of the distance from the root of the hairs and the second one will tell me where the strands will stop being planted. So I can kind of compress and stretch the positions of the new hairs. In case of feathers for example you might want to set this value to a bit higher because a feather stem does not have any hairs at its root and we can start generating the hairs a little bit later on. So then we have the side count. By default this is set to two which means that each hair will have new hairs planted on two sides opposite of each other. So this would be perfect for something like feathers but we can also change it to a smaller parameter like for example one if we just want one-sided hairs or we can increase this to three or four. So you see if I change this to three we have three sides and all of the sides will have equal angle between each other. So as I keep increasing this you can see that we have more sides. I'll just leave it to two. Next we'll have the twist parameter and this will twist the hairs along the stem that we have on our base strand. So if I change the twist you can see that we are twisting the hairs and this diagram at the bottom, this little ramp here, controls how much twisting is done relative to the length of the base strand. So if I increase this value here or if I make it even, the twist value will be equal throughout the whole strand. And likewise I can for example taper it towards the end to reduce the twist at the end and this allows us to produce some interesting effects like maybe spiraling the hairs a little bit and controlling all the overall rotations of the new hairs on the strand. We can also add or remove twist randomness. By default there is some randomness. If I remove it the hairs will be just completely opposite of each other and likewise if I increase the randomness we can really make the new hairs random. This would be ideal for something like branches on a tree for example. I'll just change the randomness to be a small value again. And defining parameter controls the twist of the hairs but relative to the length of the initial strand. So let me change the finding to a negative value and you can see that they are kind of twisting upwards and if I change the finding to a positive value they are twisting downwards. Just like the twist and the length parameter we can control this along the length of the base strand so I can adjust the finding to be 
more towards the bottom or less towards the bottom. And this is again very useful for something like feathers where you might want to have a little bit less fanning at the bottom and a little bit more at the top. And in conjunction with a length ramp, you can also make an interesting feather effect by scaling down the strands at the top and at the bottom while making them longer towards the middle. So just like all the other parameters, fanning also has a random factor. So I can increase this to make the hairs a little bit more chaotic. And this generally helps when you want to add some realism towards your groom. The final set of parameters which are important is the strand group parameter and the resulting strand group parameter. Strand group parameters are handled in a separate video and they basically allow you to separate each of the strands inside of your groom into separate groups and have operators be applied to specific groups later on in the stack. So the first strand group value specifies which strand group on the initial hair it will plant the new hairs on. By specifying zero, you're just saying that you want to plant them on top of all of the hairs inside the groom. And this is fine because before the propagation node, we just had the initial hair sticking out of our sphere. And then the resulting strand group specifies the group that the new strands of our hair structures will have. So we'll just set this to one. And by adding another render settings node, we can see what kind of effect this will have. So if I add a second render settings node, and if I set the strand group to one over here, and I'll just drag the other render settings node on top of this, this new render settings, which has a strand group of one, will just affect the newly planted hairs. And this is important to have for all kinds of scenarios where you use the propagator because now you can affect the branches differently from how you, for example, would affect the stems of a tree. You can make the stems a little bit wider and you can make the branches a little bit more narrow. So now that you have all of these parameters set up, you can go and use the Ornatrix hair stack just like you would before. You can add operators below the propagation node. For example, let me add something like a surface comb and it will reflect right away by changing the propagated strands to conform to the shape of the modified hairs. If I wanted, for example, all of my hairs or feathers to be facing parallel to my distribution mesh, as you would in normal situations, you can also add a rotate operator and set the orient based on strands shape option to be on. Once I do this, I can go back to my propagation node and just remove all of the twists that we have. So all of my strands are now parallel to my distribution mesh. Again, the twist parameter inside the propagation node will override the underlying rotation, but this just adds more flexibility and control of how you can rotate the newly created hairs around the stem of the strand. In fact, I can go and change the global angle in my rotate node and you can see that it is reflected by the propagator. Additionally, you can always add operators on top of the propagator node. So if I go here and I add something like a strand gravity, you can see that it also affects the propagated nodes. And since we have set the group of the propagated strands to one, I can just apply the strand gravity to the newly created hairs. And by doing so, my initial hairs are unaffected, but all the newly created hairs are now pulled down due to the gravity effect. So what if I wanted now to plant more hairs on top of the secondary hairs? I can certainly do that, but let me first go and reduce the count of my propagated hairs just so the effect is more visible. And on top of this propagation node, I can now add another propagation node. And for the second propagation node, I will set the strand group on which the hairs are planted to one, and I will set the resulting strand group to two and I will just reduce the count of the newly propagated nodes and that will decrease their length a little bit so we can see what's going on. And predictably, the newly propagated nodes appear on top of our secondary hairs. Let me just add another render settings operator and I will scale down the radius and set the strand group to two. And this allows me to see the hairs which are generated on top of our secondary hairs. And you can really keep going and add more and more propagated nodes, but I will leave this for a future tutorial where we'll learn how to make vegetation. For now, let's just quickly set up feathers on a bird just so we can see how this is used in real practice. I'm going to go and open my eagle scene. So this scene has a bald eagle which is in a bad need for some feathers to cover its body. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did before and just add a quick fur ball setup on top of it. I will go scale down my strands a bit and I will also decrease the count of the strands just so that we can have a better visualization of what our feathers look like while we are creating them. Also maybe the thickness of the feather stems is a bit too much so I will decrease this and right away I will add a surface comb modifier so we can get the feathers to follow the body and I'll just go and create a few sinks that will orient the feathers on top of the body and maybe I will make them a little bit closer 
to the surface of my mesh. So let's say I'm sort of happy with this. Then I will add a propagation operator on top of my stack and I will decrease the number of hairs to maybe something like 30. I will also change the length and right away I will change the low range to be a bit higher. Remember that the feather stems do not have any hairs at the bottom and I will also change the length to be a little bit more feather-like which means that it will taper off at the root. It will be a little bit shorter in the middle and it will be pretty short when it just starts off. Then I will go and add some fanning to my feathers so they will be fanning upwards and maybe I will also change the diagram a little bit so they are fanning a little bit more evenly throughout the whole strand. I will add some fanning randomness as well so we have a little bit more fluffed up look. And then right after the surface comb node, I will also add the rotation node and I will set the orient based on strand shape to on. So all of the feathers are now facing my mesh. Finally, as we see in the propagation node, the resulting strand group is one. So we can add another render settings operator and drag this one on top as well. And in here, we will set the strand group to one and change the radius to be a little bit thinner, just so we get the hairs on the feathers to be a little bit thinner than the actual feather stem. Finally, I will go to my hair from guides node and bump up the number of hairs previewed in viewport to maybe like a thousand. So we see our eagle a little bit better. And just to show that texturing will work fine for the feathers, I'm going to select my hairs and I'm going to assign the same material that our bird has. Once I do that, you can see that all of the feathers are now inheriting the surface texture coordinates and are thus having the same color as where this feather is placed. Of course, you can do many more interesting effects and you can probably have the stems to be different color than the feathers themselves, but this is a subject for a different tutorial. So this is just a quick overview of how you can create realistic feathers without having to rely on texturing of polygons and actually having true hairs on your feather models. In a future tutorial, we will also learn how to use mesh from strands with this kind of approach to create trees and shrubs. Thank you very much for watching.